Okay, welcome to video reel SCR002. In this video reel, I'll be showing you how to create a cookie grabber starter project game using Scratch. Um, the presentation you can see on the screen, I will place a link to that in the description below. But on slide three of that presentation, you'll see a folder icon. If you click and follow that link, you'll come to this folder. Now for this video reel, we will need the first three files. Um, so if you right mouse click, each of the cookie, grab one and grab two files and download them. They should appear in your downloads folder or wherever you have set them to download to. So now I'm going to go across to Scratch. Now I'm assuming that you have a Scratch uh, account. If you don't, just make one. It's very straightforward. Um, I'm going to hit the create. So this will create a new blank template project. I'm going to delete the default cat sprite and I'm going to go down here to upload a new sprite. I'm going to start with the cookie SVG file. By the way, the, an SVG file is, is a vector file format. It's an image, but it's in vector format, so everything is stored numerically. Um, it's a way of reducing the file size, basically. So if I just open that up, the default name for that sprite is the file name. I'm going to upload, grab one. I'm going to change the name of that sprite to grabber. And then I'm going to come across with that sprite selected to costumes. And I'm going to upload the second costume. OK, so we've got everything we need inside the project now. We just need to position the two grabber costumes. Now, the, one of the reasons why I put the gray background is so that when I grab everything and reposition it, you'll see the cross come up. It just means that it's going to be in the perfect position for both of the costumes. So I'll just delete the gray background. Now I'll do the same with costume two. Delete. OK, that's all of our sprites created and our costumes uh, imported. OK, so now I'm going to add the code um, to make the grabber sprite function correctly. So I'm going to go across with it selected. I'm going to go across to the code area of the screen. Now, when the green flag is pressed, what I want it to do is, as you can see, it's, it's the sprite is very large. I want it to reduce to 40%. So I've just come into looks, dragged that across the size, set size to 40%, and I actually want to hide it. Hide. Now, one of the biggest problems that I've come across in over the years with Scratch is, is problems that, that's uh, to do with timing. When you hit the green flag, there's no certainty as to what's going to happen first. Some kind, sometimes that can cause glitches. So what I tend to do is sequence each of uh, the sprites to do things in a specific order. So I'll show you what I mean. So if I go to events, now I only want um, the grabber sprite to function when it receives a message. And that message is go underscore grabber. So when it receives that message, I haven't broadcast it yet, but when it does, I want it to set a variable. So I need to make a variable called grabbing for all sprites. Now what this will do is this will enable other sprites to know when I'm actually grabbing, which, which in this game is clicking the mouse button. Um, so when it receives go grabber, it's going to set grabbing to zero, which effectively means I'm not grabbing. I then want it to go to the front. So within Scratch, sprites and objects within sprites and things are layered on top of each other. And all I'm doing here is making sure that whatever happens when the game begins, that the hand is at the top. 
Okay, so it's going to go to the front and then it's going to show and reveal itself. And then from this point forward, using the forever loop, it's going to go to the mouse pointer. So as long as the mouse pointer is over the scratch window, this sprite will follow it. So to initiate or show that I'm grabbing when I hit the mouse button, I'm going to create a block. And I'm going to call that block actuate, which basically means move, question mark. OK, I'm going to pop that over there, reorganize my code. I'm going to. So basically, while the game is running, it's going to be going to the mouse pointer and then it's going to be executing whatever is going to go in this code block. So within the code block, which literally just triggers and, and makes it appear as though I'm grabbing. I need an if statement, an operator, and. So two things need to happen in order for me to be able to register that I'm grabbing. The first one is that the mouse needs to be down, and the variable grabbing needs to be zero. I.e., if I click the mouse and it's not already grabbing, it will enable me to grab. And when I do grab, it's going to switch to costume two, which is me cl clenching my hand. And then it's going to set grabbing to one. And what this basically means is that it won't, if, if I don't put this mechanism in place, every time I click the mouse, or when I click the mouse, it's going to continually want to go from grabbing to not grabbing, grabbing to not grabbing. So this just makes sure that if I've, once I've clicked the mouse, it won't redo this code block. Okay. Now what I want to do is register when I release the mouse button. And the way that I do that is by adding not So when the mouse is not down, it's going to duplicate this, switch the costume back to one, i.e. not grabbing anymore, and then set the variable to zero. Okay. Now if I run this, the only bit that executes is this bit. So it's reset its size and it's hidden it. There it is. Okay. So we'll come back to this. We can't actually test it yet because it will only function when it receives the go grabber uh, broadcast message. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to add the code and get everything ready for the cookie sprite. So I'm going to select it. It's going to go in and make sure that my cookie is in the middle of the costume, which it is now. Okay, now in the same way as I did with the grabber, um, I want to change a few things as soon as the green flag is clicked. Uh, the first one is that I want to set the size, and I want to set the size to 50%. I also want to set the drag to not draggable. Now, when I was creating this project, I had some issues with accidentally grabbing and dragging objects on the screen. So this just stops you being able to do that. And finally, I want to hide the sprite. Okay, now, in the same way that the grabber uh, does its thing when it's triggered by a broadcast message, I want to do the same thing with the cookies. So, go into here. When I receive new message, I go underscore cookies. Okay, so when this message is broadcast and received by the cookie sprite, 
um, I want it to run some code. Now, again, in the same way, Grabber uses a variable. The cookie sprite also uses a variable that can be seen by all sprites. And this variable is going to be called handful. And the first thing it does when it receives its broadcast message is set handful to zero. Now this variable is, is used within the program to stop cookies, multiple cookies being picked up at the same time. Okay, uh, right, so I'll explain a bit more as we go along how that works. So next thing, I want to create some clones or copies of the cookie sprite. And I want to create, all right, that was the wrong one. I want to repeat, I want to create 10 clones of cookie sprites. Each one at a random position somewhere within the screen. And this is how we do random. The random X and Y positions are set here. So minus 220 to 220. So it will basically choose a number between that range. Minus 160 and 160. That's its Y position. And then each time it runs, it moves to a new position and then it... Creates a clone of itself. There we go. I couldn't find it. Create a clone of myself. Now, once all of the 10 clones have been created, I then want it to broadcast the message to, to tell the grabber that it can now set itself up. Okay. Right. So, all I need to do now is tell it what to do when it creates itself as a new clone. Okay, so let's come down here. When I start as a clone, I want it to reveal itself, I want it to show, and then for the duration of its life, which is forever, or at least while the game is running, I want it to behave in a certain way depending on whether or not it's been picked up. Okay, so I'm going to use an if statement. Now, this is going to look quite complicated, but I'll explain as we go along. I only want a cookie to be able to react in a certain way if the circumstances are perfect. Okay. Now, the first one I'm going to do is I only want it to be able to be picked up if the distance... Is less than 12. What that basically means is if, if the mouse cursor, the mouse pointer, is within 12 pixels of the center of the cookie, it can be picked up. And if grabbing is one, i.e. the mouse button has been pushed and handful is zero, i.e. no other cookie has been picked up. So if it's close to the mouse pointer and the mouse pointer and, and the grabber object is grabbing, i.e. the mouse button is pressed, and handful is zero, i.e. no other cookie has been picked up, well, if that is all true, first thing I want to do is indicate that something is now being picked up. Handful is set to one. And then what I want to do is while it's been picked up and the mouse pointer is down, I want it 
to continue to do this or execute this following code while grabbing is equal to zero or repeat until. Okay, so what that basically means is as soon as I let go of the mouse, um, grabbing will be set to zero. So this code will stop executing. Okay, so while the mouse button is pressed, it's going to go to the front. It's then going to go back one. So it's going to go to the front, which is on top of the grabber object, and then go back one. So it's just below the grabber, backwards one, and then it's going to actually go to the grabber object. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, if a cookie's picked up according to these criteria, it indicates that the, the hand or the grabber is now full and it will continue executing this code until the user releases the mouse and therefore drops the cookie. Okay, now when that happens, this code stops executing and it sets handful back to zero to indicate that there's nothing in the hand anymore. Okay, now everything hopefully, touch wood, is ready to go. The only thing we need to do is trigger the go cookies. Okay, now the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to the stage. And when the green flag is pressed, go cookies. Okay, now hopefully, let me just hide these two variables. When I run it, what will happen is um, it will broadcast the message go cookies. This code will execute, which in turn will create 10 clones at various positions around the screen. It will then broadcast go grabber, which will then execute this code, which will enable the grabber to start functioning. Okay. Now, as you can see, if all of the conditions are correct, the game in this case actually works much better if it's in large mode. So if I'm close enough and no other cookie has been picked up, I can now pick up and drop the cookies to my heart's content. Okay, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Good luck with modifying it.